everyone. I hope that you are having a great day uh, and enjoying the weather. Today it's actually beautiful. It's a little cool, but it is sunny at least. Uh, today I'm going to be demonstrating how to do a cross weave bracelet. And you can do this really with many different kinds of beads and you can use whatever you have at home. Um, and I'm going to show you the materials you need, but let me show you a couple of the finished bracelets that I've made in the past. So here is one, and you can see this is using, um, I have square Swarovski, Swarovski crystals in the middle, and then all the other crystals actually are Swarovski. And I close it with a, a box clasp. And you can really use any kind of clasp that you want. There's so many different kinds, and I like to mix it up. So this is really nice and sparkly. Um, and then, let's undo this one. Then there's also one of my favorite ways of doing this. I like to do with the flowers this time of year, especially. Uh, I call this my flower garden bracelet. Um, these are polymer cl uh, clay uh, flower beads. And then all the beads on the sides are uh, glass. So this is actually what we're going to be making today. So materials you'll need, I use beading wire. So you can get these in different sizes, um, different thicknesses. Uh, for my bracelets, um, necklaces, it depends on what I'm making. Um, in this case, I'm going to need two strands of the the uh, wire so I and it's flexible even though it's called beading wire it is very flexible um, and I like to use two str um, two strands uh, using th slightly thicker so this thickness is 0.015 um, I often have used 0.018 for like bracelets too which is a bit thinner uh, but um, because it, it depends on what you're going to be using it for. So because this is going to have a little more attention to it and um, I want it, the wire to be a little stronger. So I'm using the 0.015 for this. You can find this really at any bead store, craft store, online. Um, and it doesn't have to be bead line. You can find any kind of beading wire works. And I also have a ruler. Um, I have my beads, different kinds of um, uh, polymer clay beads, which I'm going to use. It's really springy, summery looking. I just love the color combos. Um, I have clasps. So this clasp I'm going to use, it's called a toggle clasp and it works kind of like that. And those are really super good for like bracelets. It makes them easy to get on and off, I find. Um, you also need crimp beads. These are like tiny, tiny metal beads that you use on the end to attach to keep the clasps on and the beads on. And then you need um, six uh, millimeter beads. So you need like bicones, which is what these are. You need uh, round ones, which is what these are. And then rondelles which is what these are, which is basically like a flat, and these are all six millimeters. Hi, Sarah, I hope you're doing well. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull this back so you can see. Oh, and you're also gonna need um, flat nose pliers. Um, if you have a crimping tool, you can use crimping tools, but just for the sake, in case you have never done anything like this before, um, I'm going to show you using how to close a crimp with flat nose pliers because it's really simple, easy, and it holds strongly. Um, and then of course you will need scissors and I love my little, um, I love these little scissors. I use them all the time just because they're small, they're narrow, I can get them into all sorts of tighter spaces. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut my wire. I want um eight to nine inches i tend to like to get uh do more rather than less um that way you have a little more room to work with so i'm gonna measure nine inches i may even go ten just to err on 
the safe side. And so I've got one strand cut and I'm going to do the second. Okay, so I've got my two strands of wire cut. So I'm gonna put the ends together. And this is part of the trickiest part of the whole uh, process. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna slide one of these um, crimp beads over both wires at the end. I've put my wires together and now I have slid the crimp on. And now I'm gonna put one end of the clasp on. I'm gonna put this end on and through it so it's like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the end of my wire here and I'm gonna fold it over again like this and press it down with my fingers and then I'm gonna put the crimp bead through both of those wires. So you need to have crimp beads that are thick enough that's going to go through the wire four times. And often I find if you just like um, pinch the wire with your uh, thumb and forefinger, it helps to uh, keep the wire down so you can get it through. And my crimp may be a little small. I may have to pull a different one out. Now I'm getting it through. Okay. So what you want to do is pull the crimp as close to the clasp end as you possibly can. But you want to give the clasp end a little bit of give so it moves a little like that. And you see how I've got the crimp on there? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flat nose pliers. We can use chain nose too. And I'm going to put it over the crimp and I'm going to flatten it. And that's going to hold the crimp on here. It's going to keep the clasp from falling off. And eventually once I get the beads on there, it'll keep the beads from falling off. And I'm just going to press it down. And there it is, it's made, it's on there tight. So now what I'm gonna do, now it's the fun part. So we've got this little tail here. So often when I do my beading, I will actually bead over these tails. Uh, but in this case, because I am gonna be beading up two different wires, I'm actually going to cut these this tail off. So I take my, my small scissors. Again, another reason why I like to use these is because I can get way down in close and cut off what I need easily. See, so now I have the tail clipped off. So now you have two working wires here. So what you want to do, you want to take a, um, split the wires, and you're going to bead one side at a time to start. And I need to, before I do that, I need to just open up my, because um, beads here because they were still on a strand. So excuse me for a minute while I just open them up. And you can leave your beads on strands like this if you want. Um, but I often like to put them like in little containers like this and put my beads in there. Hi Gay. Hi Les Leslie. Hope you're having a good day. Okay, so now the fun part begins. 
Now we're going to do some beading. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the six millimeter round beads on one end on one of the wires. You see how I have them split like this? They are split. Okay, so I'm going to put on one wire only. And the wires do like to move around a little bit. It'll get easier once you really get started. So you're going to put one of the... Um, uh, the round ones and then you're going to put um, one of the flat rondelles and one of the bicone crystals so it looks like that And now you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So a round crystal. A rondelle, a flat rondelle. And one of these bicones. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your, one of the, um, your middle beads and so if you can see I've got both of these one on each side and each wire so what you're going to do now is you're going to take one of your middle beads you're going to take one wire put it through the middle like so and then you're going to take the other wire Put it through the middle the other way so it's opposite direction like that and then you're going to pull and this bead's going to go down into the middle and then you have the start of the bracelet really very simple easy fun to do and then you just can continue doing the same um, repeat the process over and over again until you get the length that you want so I'm going to continue doing this on as we continue so now doing one strand at a, one strand aside uh, around a rondelle and a bicone on one wire and then again the same on the other wire you can do these with any colors that you want, any kinds of beads that you want. So see I've got, let me hold this up a little better for you so you can see. So now I'm going to put another um, bead on. This time I'm going to put one of the pink ones. So again, to do that you put one wire through the bead. That's what I get for holding it up. Hold on one second. My beads just flew off here because I wasn't holding on to the wire carefully. It's more intent on showing you what I was doing rather than watching what I was doing. Okay. So you're going to take one bead, your middle bead here, and I've got a pink flower this time and you put one wire through one end it wants to slide out on me and the other wire ugh, it's harder to do this when I'm when it's up in the air I guess So I've got one wire through one end. I'm going to put the second wire through the other end. Opposite direction. Like so. And then you pull. See? 
and as you're working on these two sometimes I find you may have to fiddle with the middle beads a little bit just so that it sits right and the more you work on this the more they will sit fine so it's really starting to look really pretty there so now I'm going to continue on on one strand on each wire so I'm going to do a round a uh, rondelle and a bicone I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So it looks like that. Now I'm going to put another flower bead on. This one has multi, which is why I was using yellow and pink before, because they're multicolored. And again, I'm going to take bead, string it through one side, one wire, use the second wire and string it on the opposite end, pull tight, there you go, and I'm just going to keep repeating this until I'm done. So it you know, depends on um, the size of your wrist and the kinds of beads you're using, um, how many beads you'll need in the middle, and how many beads you'll need on the side. Um, so this one, you can see I used about seven of the flower beads to fit my wrist, and that's usually what I use, it's about seven. Although this one, I use eight. So it depends on the kind of beads you're using. I only use seven on this one because the beads are bigger in the middle and it sits differently. So it's, it's the kind of thing you have to play with, play around with, and that's half the fun of it, um, you know, is to play around with it when you're, when you're beading. Okay, so now I've got another side here all, um, Sorry, there was schmutz on there. It's cotton from the uh, cord. So now I have a third set ready, or fourth set, to, ready to be beaded up with the middle bead. So now I'm going to continue my pattern, and I'm going to use a yellow one. And I'm going to put threaded through with the wire on one side. And then again on the other, opposite direction, pull. There it is, isn't that pretty? And I'm going to keep going here. Sometimes you'll see like this one, it's like popping up a little bit instead of laying flat. That's okay. You can just pull, pull this tight, pull the wire tight and it will sit. And eventually if it's not sitting for you right to begin with, it's okay. Once you get to your next, um, and next, uh, center bead, usually everything all settles down. Okay. So now I have... I'm ready again for my center bead. I'm going to do another pink one. So again, I'm going to put a wire through one end and then take my wire, put it through the bead in the opposite direction. And then pull it tight. Yeah, I'm going to keep going here. So this bracelet I think is going to be a little smaller, um, but that's okay. I can always make this for 
different size wrists, and I know I have some young ladies who like to wear these too. Now I'm continuing to put the glass beads on. So again, it's a, a round bead, a rondelle, and bicone. And you can see that they are different. Hi Jack, how are you? Um, the beads are different colors and that's okay. Even the green ones are different. Makes it more interesting. So now I'm gonna put another bead in the center. Again, wire through one way and then the other wire through the opposite direction. So you're cross, crossing it, pull tight. I'm going to do one more, but I think that this is getting let's see if I can do one more round or not. Getting to the end of my cord. So I'm going to do one more bead in the middle here. I'm going to do another yellow. Yellow or pink. I'll do the yellow. Okay, so I'm going to put one wire through one end and the other wire through the opposite end again. Pull both ends tight. There we go. All right, so now I'm getting close to the end of my wire here. I could have made this longer, but this is going to be more for you, um, for a young lady with a smaller wrist. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just bead one more end here. So I'm going to do on each end again a round rondelle. and a bicone. So yeah, for a child, it's, <clears throat> I cut about 10 inches, but really um, on each wire, but I find that probably at least 12 inches is probably best for an adult. Okay, flip this over. All right, so now I've got the last bit here. So now what I wanna do is put the crimp on. as tight as I can here before I get, do the crimp. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the crimp and I'm going to slide it over both wires. only got one wire. Sometimes at the very end, the last one can be a little uppity. There we go. Got it through both wires. And now I'm going to put the other clasp end on. Both go through both wires. 
just like you did on the other end. And then I'm going to turn this wire over and then put it through the crimp again. And again, this is not something I can do and show you in the air so much because it's harder to do that way. Sometimes the other side, the, the last other end is always, I always find is harder to do than the beginning because you're working, trying to keep the beads down, keep everything as tight as possible while getting the wire through. So again, I'm trying to Use my thumb and forefinger to pinch it, to pinch the wire so I can get the crimp through both sides, both ends of the wire. And I think I just got it, yes. So I got one, let's see. Yep, I only got one end here. So this one is always a little tricky to do. wire through. Sometimes you have to do one wire and then the other to get them both through. Sometimes you don't like to go in together. And that's okay as long as you get them both through. So you have to excuse me, I'm going to put my high intensity light here because I need to be able to see well enough what I'm doing. And it makes it a little harder for you possibly to see there, but it just makes it easier for me to see what I'm doing. And I always find, especially doing the the clasp on the second end and this bracelet always is harder. Because often the wires just don't want to behave the way you want them to. these two wires together and try and get them through the the uh, crimp bead. Okay, I've got them through both. So, but I'm going to show you something here. So you can see that my crimp and my clasp are way at the end here from where the beads are. 
So what I have to do now is I have to pull on these ends and move the crimp down gradually so that everything gets closer down to the bottom and, um, uh, and tighten things up. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling on the wire ends And that will also help to pull the clasp down some. You can see that, see how the crimp is getting closer to the clasp beads? And again, just have to kind of pull them and play with it a little bit. until it gets tight enough and close enough to the glass beads that you have put on already. Like that, see? So now what I'm gonna do, like I did with the other end, is I'm gonna crimp that end. I'm gonna take my flat nose pliers and I'm gonna put it right over the crimp and it's going to flatten it. Now it's flattened, but you see I still have a little bit of that tail there from the working end. So I'm gonna take my scissors and then just cut that wire off. Though sometimes I like to do one wire and then the other instead of them together. I find I can get it much closer and get a cleaner cut that way. And there it is, it's done. So it's a really simple, easy way to make a brace it's fun and it's really pretty so I'll show you how the toggle class works for those that you aren't familiar so you basically put one end in through the hole here and then it holds it like that then you have a really pretty bracelet so that's how you do a, um, uh, a cross weave um, I hope you enjoyed it um, and uh, if you have, have any questions, feel free to message me, um, and I hope, look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Have a good week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye.